In this video, we'll discuss how to use an IMU, an inertial measurement unit, which is something that you can use to measure how far something has moved. Now we'll be using specifically the LSM 6D S33, which is an accelerometer and gyroscope. So the accelerometer measures our acceleration, or x double dot, and it's in three axes, so it also measures y double dot and z double dot. The gyroscope measures angular speed, so it measures omega as well as our rotational speeds around our other axes, so omega is our, uh, our angular speed about the x-axis, and then we're also going to measure uh, the other two speeds, let's call them like gamma and delta or something, which are the speeds around x, y, and z. This chip also measures temperature, and we'll see that there is a certain amount of noise on these signals, and some of that is attributed to temperature change. So this chip attempts to nullify those noises by measuring its temperature, and correcting for them, and that means that we can also measure, we can read out that measured temperature within the data. So we have uh, seven pieces of data that we can read, acceleration about three axes, angular speed about those axes, and one temperature piece of information. Let me show you what this chip looks like. We have a breakout board from Pololu that contains the IMU unit. And I have the pick reading it uh, 20 times a second. And on the first row, showing the gyroscope data. On the second row, the accelerometer data. And on the third, the temperature data. Right now, it's not moving at all. Uh, but we can see the number is fluctuating, so that's the noise. Uh, this last number in the accelerometer row says about minus 15 something thousand. That represents 1g downward. So acceleration is measured from motion as well as from gravity. Um, if I try to get this a little bit more level, we can see that the x and the y values can get closer to zero. And if I tilt it significantly, I change that uh, gravity vector, so I change the x, y, z components of acceleration. If I were to rotate the z axis of angular velocity, the third number on the top row, um, should stay at a constant if I could rotate at a constant speed. It's kind of hard to do on the video. The last number, the temperature, uh, the chip data sheet does not provide an equation from the number that it provides to this uh, uh, like degree C, but if I were to touch the chip and warm it up, we can see that that number uh, gets more and more positive. So that number is correlated with temperature. So what did those numbers mean? This particular chip outputs the data as signed 16-bit shorts. So a, uh, a signed 16-bit number ranges from minus uh, 32,000 to plus 32,000. Um, we have a certain sensitivity to acceleration and uh, angular speed. So right now I've set it to plus or minus 2g sensitivity. So if I was accelerating with plus 2g's, the number would be uh, 32,000. If I was accelerating with minus 32g's, uh, sorry, minus 2g's, then I would get minus 32,000. So right now the chip in z is accelerating downwards at 1g. So we would expect minus half of this, half the sensitivity, 1g, so minus 16,000, and that's roughly what the chip was giving us when it's just sitting there in gravity. This chip is capable of talking um, in I2C or in SPI. We need to ask it for seven pieces of data 
but each piece of data is 16 bits. So we'll have 14 transactions to get the data out of this chip. So SPI would be a nice communication because it's very fast. We'll stick to I2C though, so that we can add it to our I2C bus and uh, use fewer pins. Because it's I2C, we'll have a problem of maybe the chip isn't uh, ready to talk to us or something. This particular chip has a register called uh, who am I? And who am I always returns the one constant number, zero uh, B, I wrote it down here, uh, zero one one, zero one, zero zero one. So the first thing we do when we turn on our uh, pick and we initialize I2C is we write we read from the who am I register of this particular chip, and if it responds with this number, we know that the chip is plugged in and I2C is working and we can move on. This chip also has a uh, uh, addressable, a change of address, so its address um, is 0B1101010101. And the last bit, so that's the seven bit address. This bit here is settable uh, with one of the pins and by default it was set to a one. And the last bit would be a zero one for reading and writing. So I'll add the zero there. So this would be the uh, write register. And if that last bit was a one, it would be the read register. So what else do we have to do to initialize this chip? It's actually got a lot of cool features. We'll look at the data sheet in a second, but there are three important registers to write to. The first is called control one. So C T R L one underscore X L for acceleration. This is the register that would turn on the accelerometer portion of the chip and let you set the sensitivity and a filter. And then there's a control two G register that would turn on the gyroscope and let you set its sensitivity. And then there's a control three C register, a specific control register, and it has a bit called uh, IF INC. This is an important register because uh, by default, when you talk to this chip, it, it only wants to tell you one thing. So when we read from one register, it will tell us one register. If we set the IFINC bit to a one, if we ask it for a register and then read the next register and ask it for, sorry, if we read a register and then read again, it will tell us the data that is in the sequential, the next uh, register. So by reading from the chip multiple times in a row, we will read out sequential bytes of memory. And the way the chip is set up is that all of this data that we're trying to get is set up sequentially in memory. So when the IFINC bit is one, we can sequentially read out all of the data in one transaction rather than doing many read transactions and it will save us some time. Let's look at the data sheet. This chip has some neat features. Um, it's super low power. It can be read very fast. It has um, 8K buffer built in. So if we wanted to, we could have it save the data that it's reading into a buffer and then read it out later. It has many sensitivities uh, and it's very tiny. So uh, this is the kind of accelerometer gyro that you would find in a cell phone. And that's what's made it uh, inexpensive enough for us to buy. Uh, it also has the ability to uh, detect some things automatically like a double tap or a free fall motion like you've dropped it. And it has uh, the ability to set interrupt output pins so that we could have it tell the pick, hey, something's happening. We won't use those cool functions, though. We're just going to basically read out the data. So here are the registers inside of the chip, and we can see their values. Uh, here's the who am I register, the accelerometer register, the gyroscope, and then the control register. And then there's lots of other registers that set up uh, that memory and the interrupts and things like that. So let's talk about how we do these multiple reads in I2C. So a read in I2C has a start bit, 
Then we send the, uh, the address with the write bit. Then we send the register that we want to read from. Then we do a restart bit and uh, the address with the write bit, uh, sorry, the read bit. And before what we did was we did one receive and then we were done. Now what we're allowed to do is uh, set that our variable is equal to a receive. And then we have to ack. And if you ack with a zero, you're telling the chip, I would like to read from you again. So we can do another v equals uh, receive, and we can act, this time we can act with a one, saying that now I am done, and then we would do our stop bit. And we could do this one as many times as we want, sequentially reading out the data from the chip. Let's look at where the data is in the chip. So our registers um, for the temperature uh, are in low bytes and high bytes. So if we combine the low byte with the high byte, we would get the 16-bit signed short that represents the value. So at location hex 20 is the low byte of temperature and then high byte of temperature. And then we can get the low byte of the accelerometer uh, x-axis. I'm oh, sorry, this is the G, so this is gyroscope. The low byte of the, accelero the gyroscope x, the high byte of the gyroscope x, and then the low byte of the gyroscope y, and Z, and then acceler accelerometer, X, Y, Z. So by reading 14 times in a row, starting at address hex 20, we can uh, read out all of the data at once and not have to do the start bit, the address and the register and all that over again. We just loop through this 13 times, and then we have to do this one for the 14th time so that we have to end with an ACK of 1, and then we can send our stop bit. Let's look at uh, some of this code. So I provided an imu.h and c file. The h file, uh, I put in those values of the important registers and the right address. And then here are two functions that you'll need, uh, a setup function and the read function. The read function is going to take in the register, that's the start register you're trying to read from. Uh, then you'll make an array of signed shorts, that's where the data ends up, and the number of signed shorts. So you would call the multiple read from the IMU, another function we're going to write. Once you've got those 14 uh, uh, unsigned chars, you would combine them to be seven signed shorts to get all of the data. Now we could also use this function not to read necessarily all the data out, we could just read the accelerometer data by starting at the accelerometer and only having uh, three bytes here. So it just depends what you want to read from. The initialization, the first thing you should do is you should read from who am I, and if it comes back at that value, you're good. If it doesn't, we'll sit here uh, knowing that the I2C hasn't worked. Uh, if it does work, we will turn on the accelerometer, the gyro, and the uh, sequential read bit uh, with the properties that I described um, in the homework. Now we can look at how does the IGC multiple read work. Uh, similar to another read function, we'll send the address, uh, the register we want to read from, and then an array of unsigned chars and the number of unsigned chars we want to read from. And then you would do the process of the start bit, the address, the register, the restart, all of that. So here's what I'm doing on my sample code. Um, as an intermediate step, I'm reading out all of the data and just printing it to the screen to make sure that the values look correct. Um, the other thing I'm doing is I'm, I could take that data and interpret it as pixels and draw them as bars. So I will uh, program this onto my board. And this draws what I call an inclinometer, kind of a graphical version of the x and y acceleration that tells us which way is down. So right now the board is pretty level. In, in, in that case, here's the, here's the accelerometer. Um, and so I just see a dot in the middle. And if I lean it forwards, the bar is drawn in the direction of gravity. And if I lean it left, it's drawn in that direction. And if I lean it down and to the right, I get two bars. And if I kind of rotate this around in gravity, 
I'm just taking that those acceleration numbers from x and y and converting them into bars. And that's a good demonstration that I have the ability to uh, read this chip quickly, get all the data out, and turn it into data to display. And I can tap it to show other kinds of acceleration that aren't gravity 